I scored in the 99.9 .9 percentile in step one. Now, before you think that I am just a genius and I'm naturally good at these tests, let me tell you that I actually got rejected from all of my top choice programs for university because I didn't have good enough test scores. And so what I had to do is just learn how to break down these sorts of exams so that I could improve my performance. I do the same thing for people hoping to score better on step one as well as on step two and match into the residency of their dreams. And I know that there's a lot of advice out there in terms of the kinds of things that you need to do to do well on step one. And so in this video, I'm going to break down all of that advice and boil it down to three critical principles that you need to follow so that whether you're in the first percent or the top percent or anywhere in between, you can improve your score in less time. So let's get started. So the first principle is that you wanna master concepts don't memorize details. So one of the things that's different about the US MLEs than say most other exams that you would have taken in medical school is that the US MLEs are going to focus on applying concepts. Whereas many exams that you will have taken up until this point are, will have been about really just kind of memorizing and regurgitating facts. So let me give you an example of what a concept might look like and how you can use this to learn things faster, remember it better, and get more questions on your test. So one thing that people struggle with is treatments for, say, different kinds of clots. You know, an MI, you know, do we use clopidogrel? Do we use aspirin? Do we use warfarin? Do we use heparin? How can you actually understand this? It may seem like there's a bunch of details to be memorized, but in reality, it's actually a concept. And that concept is actually something that's very simple. So really, there's kind of two clots. The first kind of clot is a clot where there's fast moving blood. And so that would be something like an artery. Another kind of clot would be something where there's slow moving blood, which is something, say, like in a vein or an atrial fibrillation. In a very general sense, things that are a clot in fast moving blood are going to be driven by platelets and things that are in a slow moving clot are going to be driven by the coagulation cascade. So like, you know, factors one, two, three, four, all the way through 12. Once you understand that principle, it becomes a lot more obvious what the treatment should be. So in general, if something is an arterial clot, you're going to use something like aspirin or clopidogrel or abciximab, something that is against the platelet plug formation. Whereas for venous clots, say like a DVT or a PE or atrial fibrillation, you're going to be using things that are targeting the coagulation cascade. So things like heparin, things like warfarin, things like rivaroxaban or other sorts of 10A inhibitors. Once you understand this principle, it becomes a lot faster for you to understand and learn new things related to clots. And so the goal with learning step one is, is that you want to understand the concepts and not just memorize these things as details so that you can learn things faster, retain it better, and apply it better on your exam. So the second principle is to use spaced repetition and make it your own. A lot of us know that we forget things. And so we've experienced, you've learned something and now it's been a week later or two weeks later and now you're forgetting it. Most of us have used things like spaced repetition and Anki, but for most of us, we don't go beyond the pre-made decks like Anking or Zonki or other things that float around the internet. Now, I understand that there's a certain convenience to just having these cards made for you and you can just sit there and learn them. However, what I wanna to suggest to you is that instead of just passively learning these things as facts, that you actually make them your own. So there's two ways that you can make them your own. The first is, is that you can make your own cards and make connections between the concepts and the ways in which you're going to apply them. So an example for what it is we were talking about before would be something like for a myocardial infarction, use the pathophysiology to explain the treatment. And because you understand the pathophysiology, now you're able to make a connection and reinforce an important fact. The second way that you can do this is, is that you can use pre-made decks, but instead of just memorizing them, you can actually use those as the basis for your own cards. Now, what's the importance of doing this on your own? Imagine that if you were in college and you saw someone who did really well in a class and they took all of their own notes. Do you think that you could take their notes and do just as well as they did without making your own notes? Probably not. The same thing is true with the USMLEs. If you're just taking someone else's notes and don't really understand the thought behind it, you're not going to do as well. The other benefit of making your own cards and continuing with this practice is that when you're studying for step one, you're going to be building the foundation necessary to do well in step two. Since the biggest predictor of step two scores is actually your step one score, it's going to help you to do better on step two because you won't have to go back and relearn nearly as much information. 
So principle number three is learning how to see the concepts within the questions on your test. So a common thing that people complain about is, is that they're constantly stuck between two answer choices and they struggle to choose the right one. Oftentimes they'll read the answer and they'll figure out that they actually knew a lot of the information about that concept, but yet they still got the question wrong. Now, most of us think in that situation that we need to just learn more things. And so we'll go to our books and try to master or learn more information. Instead, what you'll often see is, is that people get questions wrong on things that they know because they don't understand what's being asked. So let me give you an example. So in this example, we have a patient who comes in with a pretty clear myocardial infarction, and it's pretty straightforward. They're just asking what's the treatment. Now this is where it gets tricky because there are two answers that maybe you will have seen before in the context of a myocardial infarction. You see something like clopidogrel, or you also see something like heparin, both of which seem like they might be reasonable answers. Now let's take a step back and try to understand what the question's actually asking us. Is it really just asking, what do you use in a treatment for an MI? If that's true, it becomes a lot more difficult to answer the question. But let's try to simplify it and see the concept behind it. I think that what this question is asking is really just, do you understand about the pathophysiology of arterial clots, of which an MI would be one of them? Right? Since in the myocardial infarction, you have a clot in the coronary arteries. And so because of that, it's going to be primarily focused on platelets. So really the question is asking something simpler. They're just saying, which of the following is an antiplatelet agent? When you understand this, it becomes also obvious how they chose the other answer choices, since virtually all of the other answer choices have to do with the coagulation cascade and targeting that. So because of this, it becomes more clear that the answer is going to be clopidogrel. So if you get stuck between two answer choices and are constantly choosing the wrong one, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button so that when we break down more questions on the USMLEs, you'll be notified. So in this video, we've talked about the three principles that are critical for doing well on step one, shelf exams, or step two which are mastering concepts, not just memorizing details, making space repetition your own, so that instead of just passively learning all of these things as facts, that you can use space repetition to reinforce the critical concepts that you're learning. And finally, learning how to see these concepts on your test so that even though you don't have to study anymore, you can get more questions correct in less time. If you found this helpful, be sure to click on one of the related videos so that you can understand exactly what it takes for you to score better, regardless of whether you're in the top 1%, the bottom 1%, or anywhere in between.